Ellen says, what do you think about artificial intelligence and what role will it play in medicine in the future? I don't think it's going to do much good for medicine because one of the, like, the key things I was talking about in the beginning of the talk was you have to, the personal component is super important and doing the right thing is sort of a, a social personal thing most of the time, being conscientious and thoughtful and working with the individual to help them work through their questions and their obstacles to improving their own health. And what I'm trying to say is, I think the whole techno medicine thing is very overrated. You know what I'm saying? For example, there is no medical surgical fancy thing that's going to change the fact if you got a dietary disease, the best option is to fix the diet. And if you're being exposed to a toxin, avoid being exposed to the toxin. And so what I'm trying to say is you can have the most expensive fancy machine or computer. What difference does that make? I think it gets exaggerated. For example, there's a tendency to claim that so many diseases are genetic. Hardly anything is genetic. There might be different vulnerabilities to atherosclerosis, to obesity, for example, but I think it's a way to make money because if you say to a person, oh, your problem's genetic, then the only option is take this pill, okay, or have the surgery. There's nothing they could do to change their genetics. So I don't think that's going to help too much. You, you can do artificial intelligence preliminary reads, let's say on an EKG, preliminary reads in the future, maybe on a brain CT, but it's going to be hard to have those become definitive. I've heard, for example, on EKGs, they want a doctor's name attached to the DK, EKG interpretation. So there's somebody to sue, for example, if there's a problem with it. Um, I just don't think that's going to be such a great thing. I also think that if you work with a person, there's, there's a lot of communication that just comes from the relationship between the people. And that's, you know, highly valuable when you're with a machine, you'll tend to have, I think more rigid border criteria. And I think that can be detrimental because very often it takes a while to figure out where a person's coming from when you talk with them. And I'll just give you one metaphor to it. I was reading something about, um, it had something to do with psychology, this book, and it talked about how patients would communicate quite often through a metaphor. For example, it's very standard on a lot of psychology research things. They have the first person fill out a bunch of check boxes. I am happy. I am sad. Five out of 10, six out of 10. And what I'm trying to say is when the persons gave metaphors for how they were feeling, I think this came from one of the books by Siddhartha Mukherjee. He's written a couple of famous books. Um, I think it was called the inside a cell or something like that. This, this, whatever the signal of the cell. But the point I'm saying is those metaphors conveyed so much more information than did filling out check boxes. Artificial intelligence is going to be limited to checkbox mentality versus like, remember I told you that install I called Steincheck, Steincheck being the obsessive compulsive warrior stick in the mud bookworm person. That's what my family will tease me. And what I'm saying is when they say that to me, it's like they've insulted me five ways all at once. And it's kind of a joke in the family, but what you, you get my point, the metaphor conveys lots of information. And when you go to artificial intelligence and start filling out checkboxes, you lose that. And I think it's detrimental to medicine. Also, I think there's pressure to commoditize doctors and make doctors write checkbox type notes. And they'll claim, well, we're more efficient. We're making sure that nothing's missed but you're also losing out on a lot of the personal communication. I can tell you when I was a young guy, I first went into medicine 30 years ago, I would read the notes and I would always want to look at the attending's note. The attending would write a note, just two sentences, and it would tell you exactly what was going on with the patient. Then the medical student would write a three page note where every checkbox was checked, but it'd be close to worthless. And that's what I think is going to happen with artificial intelligence taking over more medicine, because you're trying to put people, you know, round things into square pegs or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That, that's not how medicine really is. Like, for example, I think medical education in this country is kind of a joke. And you say, well, why, how could I say that? And I'll tell you why, because for example, we learn all this mathematics. I'm a triple boarded high tech doctor. I don't use any math I didn't know already in fourth grade. And they study all this calculus and advanced statistics and all that stuff. You don't use it. And then you study all this physical chemistry, all this physics, it's irrelevant. They don't know anything about nutrition. So probably at least 70% of disease is caused by nutrition and toxicology but they don't learn any of it. You talk to an average medical student, they can't answer a single question that's relevant to health, okay? But they've memorized all this stuff. They've memorized the 10th symptom of a rare disease, but their ignoramus is when they talk about diabetes, hypertension, atherosclerosis, obesity, all the common things, autoimmune disease. And so, you know, I don't think real conventional medicine is ever gonna change because <clears throat> there's simply no money in teaching low-fat vegan diet to people compared to doing things like open heart surgery. So I don't see it changing. Um, I simply sort of see, you know, there was a line in a book by Kiyosaki talking about his father. He said, basically, you leave the light on, you know, let's say for a, a kid who's confused, you know, that they'll come back home and they'll see things in a better way. And I think in a sense, that's sort of what we do with this health stuff. 
we'll tell people about all these healthy things they can do to help themselves. And hopefully they'll seek it out and learn. But you also, you can't push a person up a ladder. They have to want to, to climb up the ladder to help themselves. And not many people are motivated to do that. Not many people are motivated to admit they screwed up in the past and they're willing to change and learn. So you do what you can, but I don't, I think big conventional medicine is always going to be big money medicine because the financial uh, players that control it, the big industry, that's what they want. And they've got the money. Why would they want to change anything? They're making billion dollars a year. They're not going to change anything. Um, so an individual simply has to seek out the learning for themselves. And if they do, they can learn a lot that helps them.